What's up? Here's the deal, folks. We have been around for a minute, and it turned out that so that we had the Sports Scientist podcast originally, and that was recorded live in studio. Mm -hmm. Um, Studio, my house. Yeah, (laughs) wow. That shit was fancy, though. That's that's you got a better crib than Red Man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Red Man probably has a sweet crib. So um, we, due to budget constraints, I'm just kidding. Uh, it turns out James Hoffman lives in uh, California. Marcos lives in. Uh, can I announce where you live, Marcos? Totally. You're gonna go 30th Street Station, and then you're gonna. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, lives in, uh, uh, he lives in New York City, and I live in Philadelphia currently. And it just turned out we couldn't meet up physically enough times to keep the podcast going. And we so much love to make fun of Instagram questions that after actually a lot of popular demand, um, mostly people pinging us in a a nuisance manner, we're bringing back the sports scientist low budge edition by just having Zoom meetings with shitty sound sound quality. And that's how it's going to work. So we're back, baby. Dude, the sound is so bad right now. It's amazing. It's sort of like the casting couch, but like three-way different sort of fucking Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Listen, I got a microphone. Uh, Steve Hall gave me a microphone that I plugged in. Is my sound at least better than normal? Yes, yours sounds great. Marcos. <laughs> what about mine? Like yours sounds terrible. Back. Really? How about now? Still sucks. There we, uh, uh, it'll be fine. We'll do fine. We'll get you, we'll get you mic'd up later, sign. Hmm. All right. Folks, the whole purpose of the sports scientists is to take your questions and answer them in an educational and entertaining manner. Shut up, OneDrive. Fuck. Sorry, hold on. My, computer <laughs> like, <laughs> My OneDrive was just doing that too. Like two minutes ago, I was ah, doing the same thing. Bill Gates. Um, so here's the deal. We're going to answer some of your questions from Instagram. How does this work? Occasionally, uh, post Instagram, and I'll say, folks, questions for sports scientists. You guys will submit them. Some of them are good. Most of them suck. Um, the answers you'll get on here are somewhat informative and sometimes just mostly making fun of you for being an incel. If you find that hilarious and informative, keep subscribing and keep watching our shit. If you want more real answers with, uh, as James said, a little bit uh, uh, less humor and a bit more insight, then weekly webinar, RP+, Plus. Uh, we answer questions from RP+, Plus, which is the way to get your question answered for sure, and we answer a couple of questions every week on YouTube. Renaissance Periodization YouTube, which is not this channel, um, go on there and get real fucking answers. This is going to get you some answers, but mostly the real shit like life. Fuck all this training shit. Marcos, training to you. How important is it versus ayahuasca experiences? Fuck this shit. None of this is even real. I'm pretty convinced that's true. James, how many, how many Uber drivers have you guys had talk about ayahuasca experiences with you? I've had one. Like, I'm friends with him. <laughs> we actually became friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, no surprise. I I, dude, I, I, the last one I had, it was around here in Southern California. And I was like, I don't know how it came up, but it somehow it came up. He was t- t- doing ayahuasca. And I was like, I heard you like shit your pants when you do that. Is that true? He was like, no. Well, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, how can you say no? Well, you totally did. You totally crapped yourself. What are you talking you sort about? Of, you, no, you don't. No? I, I have never done it. Enlighten me. I mean, some people allegedly shit themselves, but it's like drinking. How many people shit themselves when they drink? A lot. And that's still more than ayahuasca. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> All right. So let's I shit myself when I'm not drinking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. L- Let's take our ayahuasca doses now and come up with some questions. Um, first, uh, a comment on this post by Mar- Mr. Marcosis, which is Marcos's Instagram, and says, this is actually very well received by most of the commentators. Before you ask questions, Google that shit, then think of a better question. I think that caught our question. <laughs> half, so thanks for that. Um, let's see. Oh, shit. Um, this is pretty good. Ido Dagul of RP Plus. RP Plus. A gentleman from Israel. Marcos, go ahead. Say your usual anti-Semitic bullshit. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, of course not. You're on air. Um, he says, how do you address the following time travel conundrums? Number one, is it portal based and needs a portal generated on the other side? Thus, the invention of the time machine is the earliest access point to which we can travel, verified by someone from the future showing up upon making it work. That's number one. What do you guys think? Is it like, wait, what's the question? Time is a construct. Time is a construct. It doesn't exist. It ain't linear. Because like if you use like Terminator rules, you don't need that, right? You just show okay. up somewhere. He goes on. Number two, how do you control for location and not just point in time? Surely you don't want to arrive at exactly the same place in space time because galaxies travel. What is time anyway? A continuum or just another abstract invention, man? <sighs> Dude, Marcos, I, really, I hated the way they did it on Avengers on the second one. The uh, the second they whatever. They shot through a lot of stuff. Dude, it was awful. Yeah, what's up? Everyone was in the wait, waiting room waiting for fucking Thanos to pop up, and like Doctor Strange is like, "All right, guys, put on your boots. We're ready to go now." Yeah, they kind of closed that that scene up pretty quick. Marcos, you're our expert on astral projection and time travel. Uh, time, you've noted that it maybe isn't real. Can you expand on that? Uh, well. First, you're going to need some ingredients to get there. Yes. Some fungi. Yes. Oh. Go on. <laughs> I don't know. Just do a shit ton of DMT. You'll forget all that. <laughs> I got <laughs> my You'll yeah, forget you about all that shit. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. So my take is, is good points. A lot of shit about time travel makes no goddamn sense. Um, here's the part about time travel that makes no goddamn sense at all. And this is a sort of serious reply. Time is actually the measurement of entropy and thus the expansion of the universe. If you actually travel back in time on a global level, you have to recontract the entire universe and go back to all the processes that already occurred. Um, you're essentially moving the entire universe back while maintaining your own state. It's not that you're traveling through time. It's you have to move all of time around you. That's a lot easier said than done. It's not even that easy to say. So time travel is one of those things. It's the equivalent of, you know, you have a glass that falls off the table and splatters into a million pieces. Time travel is the equivalent of re-engineering that so that a bunch of pieces get put back into the same glass. Uh, even if it was possible, very difficult to see how that would happen. So traveling Thanks, forward in time, easy. Traveling back in time, maybe impossible on macro scale levels. I hate the time loop, time loop shit. Yeah, it's because it's everyone like, dude, I had a guy. Oh, man, this is a good reference. Marcos, it was uh, Paul from Definitions. Remember Paul? He went on a lecture to me. Un I didn't volunteer for this. He was like, well, the way time travel works is blah, blah. And he started citing Star Trek, but he was saying it like the shit was real. He was like, well, you'd have no time loops, blah, blah. I was like, well, fucking time travel isn't real. What the fuck are you talking about? But I didn't say anything. I just stood there and mostly pissed myself. You have to put an interesting spin on it. Otherwise, it just comes off as cheesy as fuck. Like the Avengers. It was like, everyone's dead. It was like such a heavy thing in the, in the first half of the film. And then in the second half, they're just like, ah, time travel, fuck it, let's go. It was so lame. It was so fucking lame. One of my favorite uh, mangas is actually a time loop thing, and they did like a fun spoof on it. But it what is this? Uh, what's it called? Um, All You Need Is Kill? The one that they did the, uh, the Tom Cruise movie kind of remake of Yes, later. yes, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, and they did like a fun sp uh, spin on it, but it wasn't just like, you know, Terminator, like back in time, back in time, back in time. <laughs> on that note. Do you guys ever have Tom Cruise fatigue where you're on a plane, you want to watch another movie, but it's all Tom Cruise's? Oh, I love Tom Cruise. I could watch him sleep. You're just like, I just can't. Get that you up. know what? I, I have that for Star Wars right now. Star Wars fatigue. Get the shit out of my face. Except so much... for The Mandalorian. Have you seen The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? No, I refuse. It's great. I'm going to watch it. No, this is this is watch saturation it of Star Wars shit right now, and I can't stand it. Like, the just Fallen Order just came out. Like, a whole bunch of Star Wars shit is always coming out, and it's always garbage. Show me something good. You know what? How about this? How about the next Mandela effect? What the fuck Makes is that? Star Wars disappear. Is that like a sci-fi Nelson Mandela spinoff? <laughs> no, you guys don't know what the Mandela effect is? It's basically when uh, two universes collided and things that we believe that happened haven't happened. Like, I saw the Sinbad movie when I was younger. It doesn't exist. That's probably for the best. You mean Jingle yeah, All the Way? You're right. 
Jingle all the way. I didn't jingle all the way. It's just called jingle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. I was really hoping it was a Nelson Mandela joke. Like I was imagining Nelson Mandela as Emperor well, I think Palpatine. That's one of the facts that people remember. It's like he died in jail. It's like he didn't die in jail. He's alive or some weird shit. Look it up. I'll send you the link. Yeah, please All do. Right. Maya Winters 3, who is Maya. Maya Winters, says, why these bitches stay on my pee? Because <laughs> it's so good? Is pee her vagina? Her pussy? Whoa. Excellent. Language. Whoa. Easy. I mean, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. What? Come on, Marcos. We don't want to talk that shit. Talk that shit, Marcos. My goodness, I would never. <laughs> I love cultured Marcos, like old Victorian England Marcos. Yes, yes. Well, you know, back in my time, I'm missing my monocle right now. I might ask <laughs> oh. I do have an ask God. I would love to see you with the monocle. I'd okay. love to see me in an ask God. <laughs> so here's the thing. Maya, may I take the liberty to say... You are a fine-looking motherfucker, you feel me? So that explains that. However, branching off this topic, you guys know some people, male or female, that are just scraping up mad shit, getting all that shit, and they're just, like, not the greatest thing to look at or even hideous, and they're just cleaning house. How does that work? Marcos, you're terrible-looking, and you get a lot, laid a lot. How does that work? I'm in a relationship, Michael. I assume you get laid a lot in that relationship, or is that uh, also false? I do. I do. I was just clarifying, making sure. Uh, it's your disposition Expand. and your confidence and the energy you put out there. I totally agree. I heard uh, your, your, you had a friend like that, Mike. Uh, I believe it was, was it Crazy Tracy? She was getting laid all the time. Like Crazy for no Tracy probably had a bit more on the I'm just going to get this dick versus it consensually given to me. <laughs> oh, she was more on the, the, the Harvey Weinstein spectrum. Yeah, she was in a Weinsteinian place with her, with her habits. Um, <laughs> more of a knob grabber is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, that's the last thing I'll say about that. That could be a terrible <laughs> derailment of a discussion into us. Awesome <laughs> so, um, all right, here we go. An actual question that we'll try to answer. Zach Drawl Fitness, which is a fucking hilarious. What? That's the That's name? His real name? It's his real name. I've met him in real life. Is that his actual name? Yeah. That's like Marcos Anavar. That's what, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's my dealer name. Shut up. <laughs> Yo, what you mean, fam? Chill. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> so he says anti-inflammatory properties of omega-3s and how that relates to hypertrophy and intracellular swelling. I actually don't know a lot about this specifically for omega-3s. Yeah. So I think if you have chronic high inflammation or higher than average, omega-3s can enhance hypertrophy by decreasing it. If you don't have chronically high inflammation, I don't think they do a whole lot of anything for hypertrophy. Uh, also, the results of omega-3s and hypertrophy are mixed slash very weak. In addition to that, um, I don't think they have that big of an anti-inflammatory effect that it actually hurts hypertrophy because we know that if you really, really smash inflammation, you hurt hypertrophy, but it's got to be a significant amount. Like, yeah, those events NSAIDs were actually steroidal anti-inflammatories in order to hurt hypertrophy. I don't think omega-3s really rise up to that level. Um, so that's my take. Anyone anyone else with anything on that? Not really. I, that's that's That would be kind of a, along the line of thought that I had too, but I didn't really, I had never really looked into it, to be honest, it's specifically yeah. with omega-3s and hypertrophy. Yep. That's one of those questions too, like if it's, if, it, if that's the kind of answer you get, there's probably not a lot of substance there. So it's one of those, like, probably don't worry about it. Like if you're taking omega-3s for health, probably keep yep. doing it. It's probably not holding you back and it's not making yeah. that big of a difference. Exactly. Yep. Yep. All right. Vionica Banana is a, not an incel and actually a female question asker. Holy shit, fellas. We finally did it. Girls are talking to us. Oh, man. <laughs> we made it. Congrats, <laughs> nerds. <laughs> we did it. So, she says, which one do you choose? 
someone you love or someone who loves you. And then she says some shit in Hawaiian, I think. Mahal mo or mahal ka. And then she says, more love and strength. RP Dr. Mike and uh, Dr. Crystal. She shouts out both me and my wife. My wife uh, seemed to love that comment. And uh, I uh, tagged Jared Feather in that comment because uh, Jared Feather has a fascination with people from the Philippine lands, which she is. Folks, love or someone you love, who do you choose? Go. That question sucks. <laughs> First of all, I'm married, right? So it's like, I don't, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say, dog? You know, in, a, in an alternate universe where Nelson Mandela's a robot or whatever Marcos was no, saying. No, Emperor Palpatine. Right. Emperor Palpatine. Ex- execute Order 69. <laughs> <laughs> so in an alternate universe. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, James, what do you think? Uh, someone who you love or loves you? Well, from a male perspective, usually you got to wait around until somebody loves you because <laughs> you love everybody else. Maybe you, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe oh, you, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. How about it? Maybe me. How many, <laughs> I'm how, kidding. I love you, man. I love many, you anyway. Shut up. Shut how many VDs have up. you gotten? Oh. <laughs> 16 this week. <laughs> <laughs> Marcos, back in the day. Honestly? Was, yeah. Voodoo Guru speaking now. Uh, Go for the person that you love, man. Fucking make the most of it. Otherwise, you're just going to be with some half-assed fucking bird, and you're like, ah, there it is again, following me around. Big bird. Sort of like a cat you don't want to keep. Yeah. You fed him once, and he's like, wow, and you're like, fuck, you don't shut up. Get out of here. Whereas I love my dog. He doesn't love me back, but I'm going to love the shit out of it, so. You know, I don't think he likes anyone. Your dog doesn't really like anyone. He's sort of like me in a way, but not. Nah, you love too too hard. That's your problem. I know. You love too much. I know. I'm gonna start microdosing uh, mushrooms for my dog. Just kidding. Just kidding. Peter, <laughs> just kidding. Easy animal lovers. Whoa. So, on a serious note, I think the answer is probably both. Like, if you're in a relationship where the love's not mutual, maybe you shouldn't be in the relationship unless the sex is just straight up outlandish. Like, shit is just nonsensical, and then you stay in that shit forever. You're miserable, but goddamn, the nights are good. Or James, in your case, the four times a day or whatever the fuck. Yeah, well, in that case, I would just be with my hand. Fuck. Disgusting. Put a ring on it, get an extra good chafe going. You know what I'm saying? Good God. Where was this James before? (laughs) So I've always been this way. I was born this way. Not on the sports scientist. I feel like because it's just a Zoom podcast, we could just sort of say whatever. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, All right. Papa Bear, spelled oh. not like regular bear, says, would love if you could speak a bit about programming around practices for athletes where tightness inhibits optimal practice. It's something I've always struggled with. Thanks. Well, if um, tightness is really the issue, then you might have to just spend some more time like before practice uh, doing some active warm-up type stuff, some dynamic stretching. You could even consider using foam roller or something on some, somewhere that's given you problems. Uh, that's a quick fix. It's not a permanent fix, but it's something that can help kind of over time make your way in that direction. Another thing you can use, which you, if this is outlandish, I know, but if you have access to is a vibration platform, it gives a temporary effect where it really loosens up your muscles and you can start training in a fuller range of motion. But again, it's temporary. The benefit you get from that is being able to now practice and train in the full range of motion. Whereas the actual vibration or even the same thing applies to foam rolling, actually same thing. Um, if you foam roll, the, the effect isn't permanent. It just loosens you up for the like 30 ish minutes and then you can train. So that's a good idea. But after that, it's just more of just managing those kind of things, flexibility, mobility training. Yeah. It's not because there's not like a lot of training considerations. Like, would, does that mean that you wouldn't, you know, squat at a uh, uh, if you're trying to get stronger, you wouldn't squat at you know reps of five, one to two RIR. That all stuff stays the same, right? There's no nothing outside of just working around pain and stuff like that. After that, it's just really a, a flexibility mobility management issue. Marcos, do you ever have clients that come in and they're just super tight? Do you try to do anything about that, or do you just sort of warm them up and get into the program? Uh, honestly, depending on the person, some people actually just like want to do, you know, fucking some type of movement flow prep shit. And depending on the person, if I know they're going to feel better doing it, like there's some fucking, you know, superpower that just like, I feel magical now that I'm going to do it with them. 
Yeah. I mean, the, Welcome to New York. Even if it's placebo, too. If they feel like yeah. it's working, then who cares? You know, makes them feel good. They're in. And probably does make them feel good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all that. Ray Mest asks a question that I want to direct to Marcos first. He says, what would be a good place to start if your passion is just training and not sales? I think this is from the perspective of a personal trainer, online coach, someone like that. Honestly, one of the best things I ever did when I was younger was to get mentors. Uh, I went up to all the people that I thought were good at their craft, uh, whether it was like, you know, bodybuilder or power lifter. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to train with you. Teach me whatever you know. I took what was useful and I just kept going, kept going. And when I was able to afford it, I actually hired trainers, people that I knew that had way more experience and knowledge than me. And that helped a shit ton. And every time you do that, you'll realize I'm not that smart. Mm, solid. Is there at some point, Marcos, where you think focusing on some sales stuff is just a requirement to expand your business? Or can you get away from uh, a long time of just getting better at your craft? I think that's one of the unfortunate things that you have to go through when you're working at a corporate gym, like, uh, you know, the big ones, New York Sports Club, Equinox, New York Health Tracking Club, whatever, Life Fitness, or whatever else is out there in the rest of uh, what's not America, New York. Um, <laughs> you think. just got to do it. You just got to do it. And I think uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but I think overcoming that weird anxiety, social anxiety that you may have trying to sell something will make you a better person overall. So maybe try to work on that just as a skill set to have as a human. That's really good. I always thought of it this way. It's okay to advertise your results and it's okay to talk about what clients can expect from you and not lie to them. You can be like, Hey, I know some stuff and I can get you in shape. Yeah. So totally. And then you're, you can advertise your clients that have gotten in shape. You're like, Hey, I work with these people and now they're in better shape. Like if you want more of the same, here's the link so you don't have to stuff advertising out of people's faces and do all kinds of gimmicks where you're bench pressing your girlfriend or whatever the new Instagram people are doing now, you know, like Charlie. I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> How many girls can you leg Last press? The leg press? down my girlfriend. That was actually a sweet video. I was like, yeah, was this is good. hilarious. I love those trunks he had on. I'm going to buy those because I'm actually <laughs> going to the saloon in January. Oh, cool. Dude, they, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, there's that, all those pictures looked like it was like a Flintstones porn scene. Like it was so funny. I was waiting. I th I'm pretty sure I've been tagging Brazzers on all your posts, by the way. <laughs> Get on it, Brazzers. By the way, that's at Charlton Banks on Instagram, one of our dear friends and training partners. And he went to Mexico all lean and shit and did a bunch of posing. And I'm sure he has multiple STDs now. All right. From, from Mexico. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Adam T. Bean says, love questions for Mike Israel Little and James Muffman. Marco, is this the fake My man. Bitch? No. <laughs> My man, Monica, what up, baby? <laughs> How do your wives handle you both being deeply closeted gay men who get together frequently <laughs> for quote-unquote guy time, and how can I convince my wife to do the same? Well, Adam, the real answer is multi-factor answer. I'll fill in the first part. You got to have a seemingly straight friend that you hang out with, and then she won't suspect a thing. That's where Marcos comes in. Gay as the night turns into the day, but boy, does he look straight. Look at that backwards hat. You can't pay money for that kind of straightness. Yeah. See, he's a straight guy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. James, what other, what other under the radar tips do we have for Adam T. Bean? I don't know. Luckily, uh, you and you were friends with my wife for a very long time before we even met. So that was like an easy in for me. I was like, oh, oh, this guy's all mine. Yeah. That was actually my plan from the beginning when we met yeah. in grad school. You I know, knew it. I, yep. I knew it. You're like, I'm going to marry one of this guy's best friends and just get to bang him all the time. Um, every now and again, your wife will get suspicious and she'll be like, Mike, like real talk. You're not banging James, are you? And I technically don't have to lie because you're the top and I'm the bottom. So I'm like, no, I, I never bang him ever. And she's like, oh, thank God, because I was starting to get worried. There's like, I found some condoms with blood in them and all this kind of stuff. Um, she gets suspicious. Know, she gets nosy. Yeah. Marcos, you've had a lot of on the down low affairs with people. What has been your craziest on the down low moment? Excuse me? <laughs> 
Look at this. I don't speak English. I don't <laughs> speak English. Ah, America yeah. has been very, very good to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Turn yes. up the Dominican. Yes. Got it. Okay. That's a good strategy too. Hey, uh, listen, uh, what was your name? Adam T. Bean. You might be able to just turn up the Dominican factor on your wife if she ever asks you some questions about that shit. Yeah, uh, totally. It works all the time. One thing that I like to do that I'm currently doing now is do kegels while I'm seeing my straight friends as we talk, and that helps something. Do you ever just leave them in on accident and forget that they're there? Excuse me? In? Yeah. What kind of kegels are you doing? Oh, those. No, no, no. What, did, what, what, what do you think I was talking about? I was just, I'm like flexing right now. Look, no hands. Oh, like the exercise. I got you. All right, James, are you talking about the, the things you put into your vagina yeah. or anus? Okay. That's what those are called. That's like what the exercise is meant to hold in. Damn. Yeah. You work on those walls, kid. You know, doesn't it, aren't some like when your wife has a baby or whatever, or she's pregnant? Don't some dads go to the Kegel class with the wives to like to like reinforce like, well, yeah, we'll do it together or whatever, right? Doesn't that? I happen? thought that was Lamaze's like breathing classes. Right, same shit. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. But like, what is kind of a? I think that's just a breathing class. I don't think that works on your fucking walls. Mike. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, th I feel like they're gonna be more resentful. Like, you did this to me. Get out of here. Jesus. Resentful Pregnancy. That's a good metal band name. Mm. Yeah. All right. Ooh, a related post. K-V-I-D-T says, how much of your early success as a trainer was a result of clever marketing versus word of mouth advertisements from your own clients? Well, I'll say none of my success early as a trainer was as a result of advertising and clever marketing because we did zero of that shit. It was all word of mouth. Honestly, I think that if you can't get good success with word of mouth, you're, not all the marketing in the world is ever going to make you sustainably uh, successful. But if you can get really good word of mouth shit going, marketing is just going to be super easy way to boost that. Gentlemen? Yeah. Well said. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is too serious of a question. Well, fuck it. We'll take this one. Noah McWright says, does time between each rep in a set matter for training effect or just the total number of reps in a set, e.g. set of eight on squats with a three-second pause in between each rep versus say to, set of eight at the same load with reps chained with no rest? So there's actually three ways this can go. One, on exercises. Marcos, is somebody barking back there? I'm at the gym, so I'm in the back room in the massage room. Somebody, somebody's Marcus, barking in that Marcus. massage room. Marcos, let me ask you another quick question before we get back to this. What I've been to your gym. I've been to that massage room. None yeah. of you fuckers is licensed to do massage. What the fuck really happens back there? Did you feel? No, for the potential massage people that we'll have coming in. Okay. <laughs> That's enough facial Gotta go. to let me know that. <laughs> That's as good of an answer as we'll get here. Legally binding answer. So three potentialities. One, you are doing an exercise that is incredibly taxing while loaded at a resting position, like squats. If you rest three seconds between reps on squats, it just milks out your energy the entire time. You end up getting fewer reps to the target muscle and the effect is shittier with higher level of fatigue and a lower level of stimulus. Two, some, some exercises is pretty equivocal to rest. Um, so like bicep curls, you can rest between reps, but like it's hard to hold the thing and your biceps are still stretch under load at the bottom. So you probably get about the same number of reps if you rest versus not. Sometimes you can rest a little to get your composure, but it's really 50-50 either way. You might as well just crank them out because it's better efficiency time-wise. And the three is if the exercise rest is actually more efficient than uh, keep cranking, you can actually magnify the total stimulus of the exercise and it's on you to see how that compares to total fatigue. For example, leg press. If you rest every couple of reps, every five reps on leg press sets, you can keep going for a long time and all those reps are real close to failure. The effect is super, super high. So is the, the fatigue, but the effect is super high and you can actually you end up doing fewer sets to get the same thing. My only last comment on that is uh, do the same kind of rest between reps every single microcycle of a given mesocycle. Otherwise, your ability to track will go completely down the drain. Gentlemen? 
Yeah, I think that's that's really good. I think like within just a normal kind of operational range of rest times, like it doesn't really matter as long as you're not going excessively short to the point where you're losing out on reps and or, you know, weight that you could be using or excessively long. Um, I think it can be beneficial to go a little bit long in some cases, but not on super axial loading exercises. Like trying to do it on squats is like, you're just going to get super fucking tired from holding the bar on your back. Whereas like if you're trying to do a high rep, like chest press or something like on a machine, that's a really easy one. You can just take a couple extra breaths, knock out five reps, take a couple extra breaths, knock out three reps, repeat as, as needed. But for things like squatting and deadlifting, like no fucking way. But outside of that, let's just be consistent. It doesn't really matter. Marco. Yeah, well, you guys said, sign off. Motherfucker. <laughs> Marcos, this one goes to you first. Noon Ali Noor, which I'm pretty sure is a motherfucker from The Mummy, um, <laughs> or some shit, uh, says, how can I create calorie deficit if I can't find any reliable calorie content table or database for the food in my country, as most of our food is traditional? How do you create a calorie deficit if you can't look up labels? Marcos, you've been to the Dominican Republic at least nine times by your hospital visits. Um, is it totally impossible to diet when you don't know what's in your food or are there tricks to use? You can probably eat less. Boom. <laughs> eat less, motherfucker. Here's the thing, folks. It's not a fucking mystery. Stick to lean meats because you know what those are. And if you don't, you just need to learn more nutritional science. Not even science, just basic. I legit walked around the gym yesterday because one of my clients who hasn't lost, he lost 20 pounds initially, but he still goes out to drink five days a week, eats a shit ton, a lot. He's like, I'm not losing weight. And me and my emotional outbursts just scream out to the whole entire gym guys i got all your fucking fitness problems solved right here you want to be skinny eat less you want to gain weight eat more you're welcome everybody have a good night legit man it's, it's one of those things like if this person asked how can i get like a super hardcore bodybuilding diet going so on and so forth it would be a little bit difficult if they said how do I do if it fits your macros without any macros, we would have a fucking serious problem, right? There's no good way around that. The thing is, bodybuilders have gotten in, into the shape of all times, like the best shape ever, without ever having any reliable calorie content. For example, you eat chicken breasts, lean cuts of steak, and rice. prepared. The rice is always prepared the same goddamn way anyway, wherever country you are. Start eating mostly that shit with some veggies and some fruits, just track portions. If you're not losing weight as fast as you want, reduce the fruits and reduce the rice a little bit and see how that goes. Eventually, you'll be down to just chicken breasts and veggies. You will fucking get lean on that shit unless you're eating an inordinate number. So pick sensible portions. And here's my last tip. Are you a little bit hungry on average through the day? If you're not and you're losing weight, fucking awesome. If you're not hungry at all and you're not losing weight, guess what you need to do? You need to eat a little bit less so that you are not always going through the day full and you're a little bit hungry. If you're a little hungry, you're on track probably to either lose weight now or lose weight soon. And honestly, if you're not losing weight, just fucking eat less a little bit over time. You will eventually get there. And you can always use other foods as a proxy for whatever you're eating. Like just because you don't have the exact type of hummus or the exact, you know, cut of meat that you're using, you can just look up like what's, what's a normal serving of lamb approximately like, what's a normal serving of chicken or what's a normal serving of rice. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you just use those estimates and just after that, it just becomes an issue of portioning like Mike already said. So it doesn't really matter either way. Like it does just because the exact thing you're eating, you can't find in a database doesn't prevent you from finding something comparable. And I'm pretty sure Google has a fucking answer to all that shit. Yes. Like yes. if I were to type in how much, you know, how much protein in an entire horse, <laughs> I don't know. I think it would pop up. Mike, Maybe. You, I don't know. I'm actually going to Google that as soon as we're done here. Did you post that horse meme the other day? I don't think I did. Somebody did posted like a, it was like an old like Renaissance kind of picture. Yes, and like, I did. The guy was like, bro, what if we melted the, uh, down a horse and used it to stick things to each other? And the guy was like, are you having problems at home? <laughs> <laughs> the invention of glue. Domo genius, who I assume his name is Dom. Uh, yo, fucking Dom. Dom. Hey, I mean, Marcos, how many people named Dom do you know? Uh, three or four. Uh, four. It's five or six, isn't it? 
Uh, four that come to mind right now. How many people named Sal do you know? Two or three. How many people named Marcos other than yourself do you know? None. What? I know at least ten other Marcoses, and all of them are from the Dominican Republic. No, you don't. What are some other comments in your neck of the woods? What's the fucking question, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Little bitch. Um, he says, how much weight, Mike, do you lose when you shave all of your hair off? I need to know. Dom, here's the real answer. On an incel scale of one to incel, that's an incel question, first of all. Second of all, the answer is it's not a detectable amount on the scale because hair weighs surprisingly almost nothing. Fuck. Every fucking cunt on my fucking... When every time I get hairy and then every time I get shaved, I'll say, oh, here's my body weight, 238. And they're like, oh, well, 235 without the hair, huh, Dr. Mike? No. <laughs> assholes, but you know, first of all, never funny. And second of all, it was funny. It was like uh, yeah. Abraham Lincoln died to that fucking joke. That motherfucker had to turn around after someone mm-hmm. was like, oh, yeah, you're pretty hairy. If you shave, it's a lot less. And he was like, I can't handle this shit. And then, boom, John Wilkes Booth and shot that dumb motherfucker right in the head. <laughs> Mike, I think you're just, you, you, you're just not committed to either being hairy or being clean shaven. You just got to pick one. Fuck that. You know how much long time it takes to fucking shave me? <laughs> Nair your asshole or your back, whatever. Everyone who says Nair your asshole is dumb, and here's why. Do you know how much Nair hurts on mucous membranes or sensitive tissues? Not after... Uh, if it's longer than four minutes, yes. Anyway, how do you know, Mark? More of the moral of the story is don't leave it on for more than four minutes, folks. Yeah, yeah. set a timer before you hop in the shower, folks. So I hear. My friend told me. <clears throat> don't have any friends. Here's a good one. D. Wilson Fitness says usefulness of monitoring blood glucose to influence meal timing just your thoughts in general is this is something i started tracking before each meal and good old basim imadi our boy from rp plus says sorry to butt into your question but uh i think he's mentioned before that it's uh one of those things uh, that most people especially naturals who aren't running gh and insulin probably shouldn't care about yeah yeah unless you're diabetic I'll say another one unless you're diabetic unless you're running slim unless you're running growth and probably in the last two cases even that's not necessary monitoring your blood glucose is a good way to poke yourself and expose yourself to potential infection for no good reason at all um you can do it if you're running boatloads of slid and growth really altering your diet and you have no idea where your blood glucose is you could do that um and probably need, don't need to do it for a long time just every now and again um otherwise uh, it's just it's really really overkill um gentlemen yeah i think yeah unless, unless you're diabetic like no yeah. reason for that um i got time for one more oh one. you got you got something to do or well, you got a job marcos yeah oh, shit all you can't right just hang out in the middle of the day all day in the let back me, in the massage office let me pick i do it for you guys shit Better be a good one, Mike. Uh, uh, Great question. Come on, Rain Man. Jack Attack 13 says, why do elite and Olympia level bodybuilders, at least in the training footage I've seen, Jay Cutler, Ronnie, etc., use partial reps almost exclusively based on the footage? I have a couple of guesses. One is... They're so big that they can't do full range of motion anymore. Like if I try to do a shoulder press, I physically can't bring the bar down because my biceps touch my forearms before that happens. Um, And I'm not even that big. Those guys are super huge. Uh, Two is uh, trying to use as much weight as possible, which has its merits. Um, And three is maybe they just didn't think it through uh, and are doing egotistical male shit because they're egotistical males and just want to lift a lot of weights. Nowadays, a lot of folks who are training the best Matt Jansen comes to mind. Uh, the folks at uh, Oxygen Gym come to mind are having all their guys use full range of motion. And those guys are bigger than the guys back in the day and probably safer. So I think it's one of, the, one of those things like, it's like asking like bodybuilders in the 60s, why do they eat a lot of red meat? Does red meat make me specifically jacked? No, it's just some shit people did in the 60s. And I think that partial range of motion 
is going to be something that goes the way of the dinosaur uh, slowly but surely and people that's going to look really stupid in retrospect. Gentlemen? The deeper you go, the more you feel it. You're welcome. Is that for sex or for lifting? We were, this is a lifting podcast? Never mind, James. <laughs> okay. I think there's a couple more things too. I think like doing the reduced range of motion. First of all, I don't think they thought it through. That's probably the biggest one. Second, I think it was just a thing. Like it was like, oh, bodybuilders do this because it's a technique that's better. They just again, they didn't really think it through. It's just a novel thing. But uh, getting into like some actual points, I think doing the partial is uh, at least to a small degree a technique used for them to try and get more mind muscle connection. Where they're like, oh, I'm trying to just focus on my pec, so I'm going to try and do like the most pec dominant part of the movement. Great point. And that, I, in that sense, it's a good notion, right? It just in, in practice, it ends up maybe not being the best practice. And I think what they also get too is because they're doing that, they never get a full terminal range where they have a lockout or like a bottom out. They're probably just getting like a massive ischemic effect, and then that rebound. Uh, uh, what's it called? Hyperemia. Hyperemia, exactly, right? So they probably get like a good mind muscle, at least for the muscle that they're working, and then they get like a massive pump afterwards just because they were just doing all, you know, basically like a pec dominant portion of the movement or whatever it is that they're doing. So that would be my guess as to why it just kind of took off that way. Um, I think their research is becoming more and more clear that full ROM is probably better for overall development as well as longevity and injury prevention. I think also like they're a lot of times training with poor fatigue management practices and their joints hurt a lot. And then locking out yeah, a yeah. full stretch is bad because their joints hurt a lot. So they're just trying to train any way they can. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like that partial lifting super heavy that got their joints hurt is what keeps them doing it like that because they can't do full ROM because it would just hurt them even more. Totally. And they they would always make the same faces. It's like... <laughs> I don't get the faces. Totally. Right every single one. <laughs> Here's another thing is like, Guys who struggle on every single rep, like every single rep seems like it hurts just the same. Like, re really? You go into failure from rep one? It's like a 20 rep set. And they're like, yeah. uh, 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 18 yeah. reps later, they're like, eh, eh. like <laughs> what's going on there? Is some, are you okay? I wouldn't survive. Like if it was legit that hard and I wasn't hamming it up, right? Like I'd be dead. How? How do we even do it? Maybe they're hamming it up. Maybe – you guys remember the early nineties training footage where like flex Wheeler would have like cut off jean overalls and like cut off flannel with boots. And you're like, oh my God. I think gay porn is great. And a big Walkman. Dude. Yes. And, and like, I know the shitty headphones with the whole wire. Oh yeah. There's a big gay porn side of bodybuilding, but fuck man, it must be bigger than I thought. Cause all that like flex magazine is just, Damn, dude, a lot of that is straight up gay how, porn, which is sweet. It's just maybe not what I'm looking for when I open up a bodybuilding mag. I don't know. How do they wear that stuff and not get like chafed out of their mind? I'm not that, I'm not anywhere near that big and I get chafed with, if I wear like something weird like that, like little short shorts or something without spandex. You know what I mean? It's actually more appropriate for you. Like you should be wearing the stuff that the 90s Flex magazines had. Exactly. That'd be dope. How could they pull it off? Like, if, if I wore that for a workout, my legs would be done for like a week. I, I want to see you fucking squatting, leg pressing, and deadlifting in Tim's. Some fucking Daisy Dukes. Dukes. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine, like, you won, like, Nationals in 1992 or whatever, and you're like, I made it. And, like, they schedule your first photo shoot. Like, you go to, like, New York. And you're like, this is great. I finally did it. Everyone's going to be so happy. And they're like, you're like, here, here's the locker room. Here's what you're changing. Here's your outfit to wear for today. And you look like this, like up your ass jean overall cutoffs and you're like huh all right mm. this is uh, excuse me sir it's missing the ass cheeks <laughs> they're like no no it's not and here's some like timberlands to go with it and a hat yeah the Maybe. hat baseball hat <laughs> turned backwards marcos <laughs> there it is bam ready all right you're welcome america Folks, that's it because Marcos has to go because he has a real job. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you in probably a few weeks with another episode of Sports Scientist. I'll post another thing on my Instagram, at Mike on Instagram. You can follow at RPDrJames if you're interested in bothering him. And Mr. M.R. Marcos. Don't follow me. I ain't got shit for you. I don't post anything. I hate social media. All kinds media. of uh, psychedelic memes. Folks, see you next time. Peace out, y'all.